I'm not going to use the mic because I'm a loud person. Who said that? <laughs> You're also a loud person because I can hear you as well. Welcome to 456. Can y'all believe Christmas is in two days? <laughs> Christmas Eve! Christmas Day is in two I know my days. However, listen here, Micah. I'm a genius. So, uh, what are some like Christmas traditions that some of you guys do? Yes, Carson. Dirty Sam, that's a good one. Yeah. That's a good one, yeah. I saw that on Facebook. Um, if you read a chapter of Luke, starting on December 5th, it actually, December 1st, it actually leads up to uh, December 24th with the last chapter of Luke, so that's really cool. Uh, let's go with one more, Hudson. Is it pajamas? Okay. Who opens the who opens the present on Christmas Eve in his pajamas? Yeah, that's a fun one. And it's all matching and you look good as a match. So um one of my things is have y'all ever heard of the pickle that you put on the Christmas tree? No. Okay, so it's actually an ornament. And what you do is your parents put the pickle on the Christmas tree and me and my siblings on Christmas Day, we would try to find the pickle on the Christmas tree, and whoever found it got to open the first Christmas present. So that's just a fun competition. But I remember when I was, uh, when it, it was actually last year, and so it was uh, my second Christmas away from home, uh, from, living, from living away from my parents and being married, and I got to my parents' house, and I give my give them my list, and um, I knew. I wanted this one thing, and I love shoes, and I wanted this specific pair of Converse's. So the other, I am not wearing them now, okay? Yes, Aspen's actually got a pair of Converse's. Does anybody else have a pair of Converse's? So, they are the coolest shoes ever. And I was like, Mom, Dad, if y'all could give me just one thing, it would be that. And I asked specifically for a red pair. And I was like, gosh, I just want this one thing. I want this one thing. I want this one thing. And I get, get to my parents' house. We're opening presents. And I see what I think is this box of Converse shoes. And I've been handed it. I open it up. And it's a, it's a red pair of Converse shoes. Like, how many of y'all have ever experienced the joy of actually getting something that you, that you wished for? Every year, Julie, or Dagger, not Julie, you're Sultan. I wish I could be like you. Anyway, and what, what are some emotions? Like, you finally got that one thing you asked for. What do you experience? Like, what are you feeling? Julie, you're like, yes! This is what I wanted! And my parents, Santa, whoever, they got it for me. And I got what I wanted. You're joyous. Happy, but it's kind of easy to be joy, joyful in that situation, isn't it? I may mean, have ever wished for something for Christmas and you didn't want it. And then we walked in there. See, it's kind of hard to be joyful in that situation, right? Like we get that it's Christmas, we get the reason for the season, we get like why we celebrate all this, but we know that. Gifts are a big part. Exchanging gifts, giving gifts is a big part. And sometimes that's kind of a hard thing to think about, right? So how do we find joy in Christmas? Because we're going to talk about something that is bigger than gifts and why we give gifts, why we care, right? But I know that during the holiday season, there might be some hard times. For some, we lost someone that we love. For some, our family's going through a really hard time. And it's it's hard to find joy. But where do we find it? So when, whenever we ask hard questions like that, like the Bible's always a good place to go to. And if you've been trekking with us uh, last week, we talked about who. Mary and Joseph, right? And Mary, she seemed like this ordinary person, right? This ordinary girl. Um, until God, this angel Gabriel, 
came into her life, and dude just changed everything. She had this plan for life, she was a fiance, she was going to get married, and then God showed up. Gabriel the angel said, you're going to have a son, and his name is Jesus. And then Joseph hears about this, and Joseph's like, man, I don't know what to really think about this, this is a weird situation, and then God shows up in a dream of Joseph, and like, hey, dude, this is what I called you to do. This is what I said is going to happen. So I need you to be on board with it. So they're on board with it. And then the king at the time decides there needs to be a census. Does anybody know what a census is? Lyndon, what does our Taylor, excuse me, what's it? That's exactly right. So it's what a lot of countries do to count how many people are in their country. Uh, we actually have one of the worldwide census coming up in 2020. Count how many people are in the world, which is crazy to think about. Anyway, the king at the time decides, hey, we're going to have a census. We're going to count everybody. So what people would do in biblical times is they would go back to their family's birth point, their family's birth path. So for Joseph, this was to go back where King David was born because Joseph is a, is a descendant of King David. And we go all the way back and we see that King David was from a town called Bethlehem. Mary and Joseph show up, and you got to think about it. Uh, from where Mary and Joseph were, from where God delivered this message to them, to where Bethlehem is, dude, it's about a 90 mile drive. That's like driving to Atlanta back and to driving to Atlanta and coming back. That's about how long it is. But they didn't have cars today. They had, we don't know what Mary rode, but they had a donkey, they had a camel, they walked. <coughs> so you got to imagine the pressure that's going through Mary and Joseph through this travel. Mary's like, dude, I'm carrying God's son. That's a big responsibility, isn't it? And I gotta go, how far? I gotta ride this camel? I don't even know how to get on top of the camel to ride. I gotta ride this donkey? Donkey's for me. Anyway, they make this, they make this trek and they get to Bethlehem. And we know the story, there's no, there's no room anywhere. A lot of people came to the census. And they come and Mary just show them there's no place to stay. So they go to this barn, and this is where Mary had the son Jesus, her son Jesus, right? And they didn't even have a bed for Jesus. They had to put him in a manger, uh, a thing that animals would eat out of. So it wasn't the best place to have a baby. But the Son of God was born, right? Mary and Joseph had experienced what God had promised. So now, Jesus is born. This is where we're at, right? And we, we actually look at Scripture. We see something else happened right after this. And I believe, let me look right now. It's actually Luke chapter 2. And it's where these angels appear to, the, to these who? Who did the angels appear to? The shepherds, right? So the shepherds are minding their own business, right? Doing shepherd stuff. At priors watching the sheep. You guys, the sheep are not the smartest animal in the world, but they can survive on their own. So the shepherds are watching these sheep, and they're just minding their own business, and then BAM! This angel comes. You gotta imagine, like, you look at scripture, and this is, I'm gonna read from here. And this, this is Luke chapter 2, and I'm gonna pick up in verse 10. It, uh, it says this. But the angel said to them, Don't be afraid. I bring you good news. It will bring great, what, to all people? Great joy to all people. Today in the town of David, the Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Here is how you know I'm telling the truth. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. So this angel shows up. And you got to think, like an angel, like you look at scripture, angels are described as bright creatures, right? Like bright beings. So this flash of light in the middle of the night is coming, and like, bam! And the shepherd's like, whoa, what's going on? Like these sheep are sleeping. We were almost asleep. And this bright light comes. And he tells them, don't be afraid. And then he keeps on going, and suddenly, a large group of angels from heaven also appeared. It's like, oh man! Now there's a lot of them. It was night, now it's so bright, it seems like day. 
And this is what the angels are doing. They were praising God, they said. May glory be God, given to God in the highest heaven. And may peace be given to those who he was pleased on earth. So the shepherds, they didn't know what was happening. They didn't expect these angels to come out of nowhere. But the angel said, dude, I give you a message of joy. I give you a message, if we go back to uh, verse 10, I give you good news, go bring great joy for all people. And we go back to verse 15, it says, after they sang praise to God, the angels left and went into heaven. Then the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see the thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby. The baby was lying in the manger. So these shepherds, do this mass of angels come and say, Hey, there is a Savior. He is born in Bethlehem. You guys need to go check him out. He's going to be bring peace. He's the good news we're talking about. These shepherds come, and you've got to think what they're thinking. Like what they're expecting. They're expecting a king. They're probably expecting an adult. They come and they see this baby. See something they don't expect. And here's, here's the truth of it, guys. Is these shepherds didn't really know what to expect. But they knew that there was going to be joy, that there was good news found in, the, in Jesus. This newborn baby. So they went and found Jesus. See, when we look at when we look at Christmas, there's a lot of different things that can take away our joy. We didn't get the gift we wanted. Our siblings were mean to us. Um, a, a hundred different reasons. But at the end of the day, dude, those things don't matter. At the end of the day, the reason that Christmas has joy attached to it is because God gave his son to us. That's why we celebrate. The reason we give gifts is because dude, Jesus gave himself to us. And here's the thing. It doesn't matter if you get a thousand gifts, if you get no gifts. Dude, no matter what, if you understand that the reason we celebrate Christmas is because Jesus gave himself to us, you will have joy no matter what situation. You will understand the Savior is here, that Jesus has brought joy, that he's brought peace, that he has brought life to us. Dude, and that's why I have joy. I don't have joy because I got this gift. Dude, I have joy because I have Jesus. I don't have joy because I got to celebrate Christmas this long with this many different families. Family is a great thing, dude, but dude, we get to celebrate because Jesus is here. And I know life can be hard. Like I said earlier, life can be hard. But dude, we have good news. We have joy, dude, and that is found in Jesus. So we're going to go on this morning. Before we do that, I want you to think about this one question. Dude, what's the best part about Christmas? You can think on that while you're doing your small group. You can think about it now. I want you to really think about what is the best part about Christmas? Like hearing the story, learning the story, knowing the story. What's the best part about Christmas? And y'all have an opportunity to talk about that this morning. I'm going to pray for you guys. Is that cool? I'm going to pray for you guys, okay? God, we love you. We thank you for giving us your son, Jesus. Jesus, thank you for giving us yourself. God, I pray that we find joy in knowing that you are here, Jesus. You have been brought to us. You have bought, brought ourselves to us, Jesus. But Jesus, you came. You didn't live the life that we could live. Died to death that we deserve to die, God. But Jesus, because you came to the small little town of Bethlehem, there's joy because of that moment. There's joy because of your life. There's joy because of your gospel, God. 
pray that we, as we go through this evening, God, that we remember that joy is found in you, Jesus. The life that is found in you, Jesus, is there is joy in you. We are just again want to say thank you. Thank you for giving yourself to us, Jesus. We love you. We pray this in Jesus' name. You're dismissed as small groups.